just feel like Nobody's honest Nobody's true And everyone's lying To make it on through I guess I just feel like Today we are checking out I Guess I Just Feel Like by John Mayer. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the acoustic guitar parts, which I guess are good for a kind of early intermediate guitar player. It's basically open chords with an F sharp minor bar chord that you'd need to be able to do it. I'm not going to cover the electric guitar parts, the solos, although they are absolutely superb. I have actually started transcribing that end solo as well. If you're keen on doing the solos as well, do let me know in the comments if there's enough requests. I'll make a lesson for those ones as well. If you didn't notice already, you need to get your capo on there at the second fret. But once you got that done, let's get started. The first chord we need is an A chord. We're just going to use our first finger to bar strings four, three, and two. You want to make sure that your finger is lifted up enough to not get the thinner string. We don't want this, an A6 chord. We want to just lift up the first finger enough so the thinner string is muted. Okay, that's the A chord. We don't want to play the thicker string, by the way. We want to try and avoid it anyway. Now, the second chord we need is this. This is a D chord with an A bass. It's based, I guess, around the C shape. If you imagine there would be a C chord, C sharp, D but we've got the open A bass still. So D with an A bass. This is a really, really common chord used for kind of blues and blues. Okay, D with an A bass. Very, very cool chord. The basic idea here is we've got one bar of the A and one bar of the D with an A bass alternating between them with a very similar rhythm pattern. The rhythm pattern is kind of interesting. So the pattern is down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so one E and a two E and three E and a four E and a 
one e and a two e and three e and a four e and one e and a two e and three e and a four e and a down up up down up up down up down up down up up down up up down up down up key thing as always with these strain patterns is keeping the hand moving consistently so make sure that your hand doesn't stop You really want to work on that a little bit. I would suggest doing it like this with the muted strums first of all, so you can really focus on your time. As soon as you add the chord, your ears will start tuning into the notes instead of the rhythm. So just... Now, it does change a little bit through the song. So what I'm doing here is a kind of a, a starting point. So I'd recommend that you get hip with that pattern first of all, and we're going to apply it to the A chord and the D with the A bass. And then as you listen to the song and as you practice a little bit more, you'll start working and kind of stumbling upon little variations. If you want to learn it exactly like the record, then you can just do a little bit more detailed listen, listening. But it's, it's all based around that kind of a pattern. Now, once we start playing with the chord, the interesting thing is that the upstrokes really want to start from that second string and the downstrokes will play that A bass note. So down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down. The down, up, down, up at the end is less, uh, less specific about where it's picking from. But down, up, up, down. the basic pattern. Now, uh, the little A with a D is often hammered as well, so you get... Okay, it's a little subtle thing. And then the second time through, uh, in the intro, it does a little which is going to be little finger going down on the 4th fret of the 2nd string 4th fret relative to the capo of course and it'll be a down strum, flick it off, down strum again and then hammer it on and then you're immediately going to have the hammering down of the D with the A bass so you end up with this found was that I wanted to use that more often. I think on the original recording it, it happens very obviously there right in the intro, but I don't hear it a lot through the rest of the song. If I'm playing it on my own without all of those other guitar layers, it sort of seemed like I I wanted to be adding that in there, and that's something that you can decide uh, what version of it you're going to do, whether you're going to make up your own version or you're going to play it just like the record, you're playing with other people, all of that, because there's lots of really beautifully played layers on this recording, so there's lots of kind of weaving going on, a little bit stonesy, I kind of hear that. Um, so that's the, the main riff, and you can add those variations in as much or as little as you want. Um, once it comes into the uh, verse, we start with that again. So I guess I just feel like... Alive. Nobody's F sharp minor, nobody's D, and everyone's F sharp minor in to make it on D. I guess I just A chord. I'm the same way to I to A. So it is literally starting with the A to the D with the A bass, does that a couple of times through, and then it goes F sharp minor D, F sharp minor D. The F sharp minor, John Mayer has these enormous hands and he's able to play it comfortably like that. I do quite often play F sharp minor this way, so my thumb is playing the bass note. My third finger is holding down two strings at the fourth fret, and then my first finger plays the bar. 
why it's awkward. I, I do it when I'm playing, but when I have to teach it, I've always feels a lot more awkward, but I think that's the way that Mr. Mayer plays it. Anyway, um, for me, if I'm playing a song like that, especially if I was playing out somewhere, I'd probably be more inclined to use the bar chord. It feels a little bit more like there's less that could go wrong. I'm not going to get any buzzy or less buzzy notes anyway. It's up to you which one of those uh, you choose. D chord's pretty standard. Um, it goes through the verse like that, and then it goes into this little kind of instrumentally section, which is A, G. The G chord comes on beat four, so A is just held for three beats, the G just for one beat on beat four, and then straight to the D. So we use that for that little instrumental break where he hits a really super high note that I have no chance of reaching at all. Uh, it just does that twice through. Uh, and then it goes to a second verse, which is essentially the same as the, the first verse. Then it goes into the solo. The first solo section has a different chord progression. So it's going for, to a G for two bars, to an F sharp minor, back to G, two bars, F sharp minor for one bar, then to E major for one bar. Then there's a variation here. A, D with an A bass. Move all that up two frets. So this is an E with an A bass. Back to D with an A bass. Okay, it's just those last four bars again. Is an A, D with an A bass. Move it up. E with an A bass. Back to D with an A bass. Just feel like... Then we're back to another verse. That last verse, there's just one extra cycle there on the F sharp minor to the D, where he does that line. And if I go blind, I still find a way. That line. So there's an extra one just in that uh, little part. And then it goes back to that bridge sequence, the A. There's some absolutely superb guitar playing there. I love the tone of that as well. It's really, really nice. It's, uh, yeah, it's got super, super vibe. Kind of Clapton-y uh, tone coming on there. I need to work still on that solo a little bit more because lots of groovy licks and things to check out. And like I said, if uh, there's enough requests here on this lesson, I will do a lesson on that solo as well because it is a proper beautiful bit of guitar playing from uh, Mr. Mayer there. Uh, I think that's everything that I've made a note of for this song. So, look, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you like the John Mayer stuff, there are loads more lessons over on the website. Do go and check it out. We have a little section just for John Mayer tunes, and I do all of the, the big classics and the, the hits, the popular guitar ones are all over there if you wanted to check out Neon or Slow Dance in a Burning Room or whatever those, you know, tunes that probably every guitar player should learn, right? Uh, yeah. So, hope you enjoyed that. Have yourself a fantastic day, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Bye-bye.